Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel Easy Mathematics. In this video lecture, we are going to cover up the chromatic polynomial. So, what is chromatic polynomial? At first, we should understand that. After that, we should find out that how to find out this chromatic polynomial. So, before starting that, just let me tell you, chromatic polynomial is a function of a graph. Chromatic polynomial is the representation of a graph in the functional way. By the function, we can find out how many total colors are required to color the graph properly. That means a polynomial form we will provide for a graph on that polynomial form depending upon the input values or depending upon the criterion or characteristics of the polynomial. We can say that how many different colors are required. That means what should be the chromatic number of the given graph that we can verify. So, what is chromatic polynomial? A graph G with n vertices can be properly colored by lambda or fewer colors. If a graph G with n vertices is given, then it can be properly colored by the lambda or fewer colors. Lambda is the uh, number of colors. So, the, lam the different lambda colorings of a graph can be expressed by the means of a polynomial. This polynomial is called the chromatic polynomial in lambda of G and it is denoted by P and lambda. P for the polynomial, N for the number of vertices and lambda is the number of colors used. So, this function P and lambda yields the number of way of properly coloring of G using lambda or fewer colors. So, initially if N number of vertices are given, then we can have at most N number of colors. Definitely the color not exceeds the N. But we can initially choose that total in number of colors. So that chosen colors or that initially considered color is lambda. Now your chromatic number should be either lambda or less than lambda. So how to find it out the chromatic polynomial. So let I be the different ways of properly coloring G using exactly I colors out of lambda colors. If their total lambda colors we have considered and out of lambda, if i number of colors are required to color G properly, then how many different ways are there to color the graph G? That number is denoted by Ci. So that we can use the binomial to find out the Ci. So here i colors can be chosen out of lambda colors in how many ways that we should at first find out. So it is lambda Ci. So that is the from binomial, we will find out this one. So, this is the different number of ways by which we can choose i number of colors from the lambda colors. So, there are ci into lambda ci different ways of properly coloring g using exactly i colors out of lambda colors. So, now since i can be any positive integer from 1 to n, as it is not possible to use more than n colors on n vertices, the chromatic polynomial is a sum of these terms. So that is, we will find out that the chromatic polynomial is P n lambda is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to n, then C i into lambda of C i. What does it mean? That if required color is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in this way, up to n, then what should be the total a number of ways to find out the uh, different coloring. So, this one we can write in this format. So, it is if we expand this one, then we will find out C1 lambda by 1 factorial plus C2 lambda into lambda minus 1 by 2 factorial and all. These all are the binomial expansions, nothing else. So, now after that, each CI each ci has to be evaluated individually for the given graph. For example, any graph with one edge requires at least two colors for proper coloring. Therefore, c1 should be zero. If two vertices are given and one edge given, then it is obvious that these two vertices are adjacent to each other. So, it requires minimum two colors. 
so with one color if we want to color then there is not no option to color in this way now that's why it is c1 is 0 again a graph with n vertices and using n different colors can be uh, properly colored in n factorial ways so if suppose three vertices are only given so that these are the connected vertices so these are adjacent to each other so if we put this one a color one suppose then there are total three colors among them if i put this one is the first color one so then it is obvious that this one should be chosen remaining two colors from and this one should be chosen from the remaining one color from so that the total number of total different ways i can put this vertex the color as three any three color of this three after choosing the one color for this vertex the remaining vertices are two two different colors are there so for this vertex we have the two options to choose and for this vertex we have one more option to choose so if we multiply this way then we can find out that the how many different ways we can color the graph so it is the three factorial we can see similarly if there are total n number of vertices and n colors are provided then by using the n different colors uh, it can be possible to color in n factorial ways so if the maximum number of colors are taken maximum color means the number of vertices and the number of colors are same that is the maximum number of color which we can consider so for the maximum number of colors it should be n factorial always so how to find out this chromatic polynomial that we will explain with an example so find the chromatic polynomial and the chromatic number for the given graph g so if this one is the graph then how to find out the chromatic polynomial so in this graph there are total five vertices are given so n is equals to 5 so what to do here the p5 lambda we should find out so p5 lambda should be it is c1 lambda the first term the second term is c2 lambda lambda minus 1 by 2 factorial then plus c3 lambda into lambda minus 1 lambda minus 2 by 3 factorial this is the next term after that it is c4 Into lambda into lambda minus one into lambda minus two into lambda minus three by four factorial plus c five into lambda into lambda minus one into lambda minus two into lambda minus three into lambda minus four divided by five factorial. Since the graph has a triangle v one v two v five, just now emphasize on the graph. So v one v two v one v two and v five v one v two and v five. This one we can consider the three vertices which are connected so this is forming a triangle so it will requires at least three different colors for proper coloring so if triangle is formed that means it requires definitely three colors to color it properly so that c1 and c2 should be zero because one color and two colors are not possible to consider so minimum three colors are required here so accordingly c1 should be zero and c2 should be zero and c5 always we know as total number of vertices total number of vertices are 5 so c5 is definitely 5 factorial always now with three colors v1 v2 v5 the three colors of the vertex v1 v2 v5 can be colored properly in three factorial ways v1 v2 v5 having three colors so these three colors can be chosen in three factorial ways so having done that we have no more choices left because vertex v3 must have the same color as v5 and v4 must have the same color as v3 just look at the graph again we have colored v1 v2 v5 now for v3 v3 is adjacent to v1 and v2 so v1 v2 as these are adjacent to v3 so v3 should have a color which is same as v5 now v4 this one is adjacent to v5 v3 and v1 so that its color should be the same as v2 so in this way we can we required only the three colors to color this graph properly so with three colors it is there are the six ways to color the graph properly so now it is similarly with the four different colors that means if we have the three colors only then we using this three colors we can color it in the six different ways if the four different colors we have considered for 
coloring this graph then what happens so the first vertex of b1 can be taken any four colors so next vertex can be taken any three colors of that so in this way so 4p3 that is the 24 different ways are there to color the vertex b1 b2 v3 b1 b2 v3 having three different colors and total four colors are provided so out of four if we choose any three so that how many different arrangements can be possible it is 4p3 so this is 24 ways are there to color the vertex b1 b2 and b5 now the fourth color can be assigned to the vertex b3 or b4 so now let us choose the remaining vertices that is v3 and b4 so after considering three colors for these three vertices we have left one more color so that color can be assigned to v4 or v3 anyone thus there are two choices for either v3 or b4 so after using these three colors here one color left and if we choose the vertex b4 then it can have color <coughs> on the same color as b2 because b2 b4 are not adjacent and one color is left so total two colors are left there to color the vertex b4 and the same for v3 also so the fifth vertex provides no adjacent choice no additional choice so among these two colors if we put one color b4 in b4 then for v3 we have only one choice left so accordingly we can say that the c4 should be 24 for coloring these three then two is the number of colors to coloring b4 and one color left to color the remaining vertex so total number is 48 so substituting this coefficient of c1 c2 c3 c4 and c5 in the polynomial we will find out the polynomial as c1 c2 0 so first two terms are 0 now for C3 it is 6 we will find out. So 6 into lambda into lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 by factorial 3. Then plus of 48 that is C4 is 48. So 48 into lambda into lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 into lambda minus 3 by factorial 4 plus 120. 120 is for the C5 that is the 5 factorial into lambda into lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 into lambda minus 3 into lambda minus 4 by factorial 5. Now if we simplify this one, then after simplification, we will find out this one as the polynomial. Here is the simplification and the polynomial is lambda to the power 5 minus 8 lambda to the power 4 plus 24 lambda cube minus 31 lambda square plus 14 lambda. This one is the chromatic polynomial of G. Now, just observe this graph here never ever you will find out any constant term in this polynomial because constant term means if you put lambda is equals to 0 then even you will get it is a non-zero value now for the chromatic number we should substitute the lambda values as 1 2 3 in this way and for which minimum value of lambda we will find out the polynomial value is not equals to 0 that lambda value is the chromatic number of g. So if we substitute here lambda is equals to 1 then what happens if we substitute 1 then it is 1 minus 8 plus 24 minus 31 plus 14. If we sum up then we will find out this value is 0. So definitely lambda is equals to 1 should not be the chromatic polynomial chromatic number for this polynomial. If we put lambda is equals to 2 you should provide the lambda is equals to 2. So if we put the lambda is equals to 2, then we will find out this value is again 0. You can try by yourself. If we put lambda is equals to 3, then it is a non-zero value. So that we can say the chromatic number of this polynomial is 3. So now to find the chromatic number from chromatic polynomial sub substitute for lambda as 1, 2, 3 we will find out this chromatic number. So for which minimum value of lambda, p lambda, uh, p and lambda becomes non-zero, that is p and lambda is not equal to zero, that particular lambda value is the chromatic number of g. Here for lambda is equals to 3, we will find out this is non-zero, hence the chromatic number is 3 here.
Now here I am providing you the chromatic polynomial for few certain graphs which are the known graph for them the, I am providing you the chromatic polynomial. So if it is the null graph with n number of vertices then its chromatic polynomial is lambda to the power of n. If a complete graph with n vertex is there then its chromatic polynomial is lambda into lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 in this way it is up to lambda minus n plus 1. If it is a tree, then its chromatic polynomial is lambda into lambda minus 1 to the power n minus 1. If it is a cycle with n number of vertices, then it is lambda minus 1 to the power n plus minus 1 to the power n into lambda minus 1. If it is a wheel, then its chromatic polynomial is lambda into, in whole bracket it is lambda minus 2 to the power n minus 1 minus of minus 1 to the power n lambda minus 2. And if it is a path graph, path graph means it is a path means nothing but the bipartite graph. So then its polynomial is lambda into lambda minus 1 to the power n minus 1. Tree and path graph for both the same polynomial definitely be there because both are the bipartite graph. Now some important observations of chromatic polynomial. Okay, just let me tell you that all these chromatic polynomials how to find it out. That I will discuss in my next video lecture. Now it is the some important observations of the chromatic polynomial. So the first observation is the constant term of any chromatic polynomial is 0. The second observation is the sum of the coefficients of the chromatic polynomial of any graph is always 0. It is if it contains at least one edge. So if a non-null graph for uh, the whatever be the chromatic polynomial you will find out if we add all the coefficients in the chromatic polynomial then the total sum is always zero for example in the last uh, example we have get this one as the chromatic polynomial here the coefficient for the first term is one for this term it is minus eight for this term it is 24 this is minus 31 and this is 14 and if we add all those then we will find out this is as 0 and it always be happen for any chromatic polynomial. If you will not find so, then you can be a wrong one. The coefficient of chromatic polynomial have alternate in sign. Just observe here, the first one is positive, then negative, positive, negative, positive. So always it will happen that the coefficient of chromatic polynomial is an alternate in sign. The absolute value of the second coefficient the absolute value of the second coefficient that is the coefficient of lambda to the power n minus 1 in the chromatic polynomial of a graph equals the number of edges in the graph and that is the given if we consider this example here we will find out that the uh, second coefficient having the numerical value 8. So we can be sure that the given graph have total 8 number of ages just have a look if this one is the graph here count the number of ages it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so total 8 number of ages are there and always this coefficient denotes the number of ages in the chromatic polynomial next observation is the highest power of lambda in the chromatic polynomial of a graph is the number of vertices n in g so highest power of lambda is here it is 5 so that highest power always denotes the number of vertices in the given graph so if you have a chromatic polynomial so observing the chromatic polynomial you can understand that how many vertices are there how many edges are there what should be the total number of colors required to color this polynomial and all so these all things we can find out from the chromatic polynomial. So that's all for today. Uh, in the next video lecture we discuss the theorem, some theorems on chromatic polynomial and afterward we discuss few examples for the chromatic polynomial. So that's all for now. Have a nice day. Thank you all.